So the basket includes why that process works. Yeah. Okay, so is this a very good reason for following the Freeman movement? Oh, absolutely. Okay, okay, so the question was if the camera would pick it up, is, is the Freeman movement, uh, or is it a, is one of our, a good reason for the Freeman movement, the fact that we don't want our governments walking into foreign nations and murdering countless millions of people for no reason just to, to, to steal their resources? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's one good reason. One good reason. Um, you know, hundreds of hundreds of thousands of tons or hundreds of millions of tons of depleted uranium being thrown around the fucking world. Uh, you know, what is it, the, the, the birth defect rate now in like Fallujah and places like that in Iraq is what, like 50, they told people to stop having kids because they're all so mutated. That's going to be our legacy because we couldn't stand up and tell our own government to go fuck itself? Are you kidding me? No, no, not my name, dude, seriously. Even if I did have a problem with these people, I wouldn't be doing shit like that. If I have a problem with somebody, I'll go fight them myself. I'm not going to send my government in somewhere to murder millions of people and million, murder billions more and birth defects and fucking shitty things to come for the next hundred million years. Well, free men don't need to be nannied or moderated or mediated. We don't. They're adversaries. You know, that, that actually, it's, it's, it's actually comical. It's not comical. It's, it, it seems to be, I'm joking to kick out of this. It's, it, it seems to be the way that things go. I was just about to start talking about something. I want to talk about something tonight. And that was the topic that brought it up. Oh. Um, which is great. Um, so where was I going with that? Yeah, we, like um, from a philosophical standpoint, we all have to live here. Grievances aside, any problems we have with other nations, the whole nine yards, we all have to live here. And our governments are really, really fucking this planet up for not even generations to come. Like, like kind of like world killing kind of stuff. Like the Fukushima shit, where you got thousands of times the radiation coming out of that thing that ever came out of Chernobyl. They've done nothing about it. All they did was take it out off the internet and stop broadcasting, and stop talking about it on the news. Yeah, so try not to talk. Thanks, about government. You guys really are fucking handy, aren't you? We got one of the biggest natural disasters that has ever happened on this planet, and hopefully ever does. And it takes a back seat to what happened uh, on the Dow Jones Industrial Lavage yesterday. Or Amy Winehouse. Yeah, like stuff, that, it's just stupid, stupid fucking crap that no one actually cares about when there's radiation pouring down on everybody right now. Do you everybody see that video of that guy in Banff? He was taking those radiation readings in Banff, Canada, and they were off the fucking chart. Rainwater just coming outside of his truck. He's got one of those, uh, what is it? Uh, I don't want to say the name wrong. But it's like yeah, that yeah, Russian Geiger counter that uh, I can't remember the name of right now. I, actually, I, I almost want to order one, yeah, but he's just, he just was, he stopped outside of Banff in Canada and he just took like a wet rag and put it outside the window and took some rain that was falling straight out of the sky, brought it back in the van and put his Geiger counter on it and it was like at the level where it said like leave the area immediately. And it was right outside uh, Lake Louise. Lake Louise, yeah. <laughs> so this is Canada. This is shit that affects us here. So that, that stuff, I mean, gee, I've been, I've been, I've been sick mildly twice in the last month. I haven't been sick for eight years. Yeah, it's interesting because there's reports about being thousands of times higher and I couldn't get access to any of the websites. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, this is, that's the other thing too, is that's what that's where I was led to where I was going to tell you where I was going to get on here and I was going to rant about some stuff. That's, this is actually the real important stuff, is the fact that we're letting these people walk all over the planet and seriously fuck shit up right now. I mean, walking into court and beating a traffic ticket, okay, you know, that's, that's the, the, the feel-good moment of the week, maybe, that kind of stuff. But we got to stop feeding these guys. we got to stop giving them money, because they are killing us all. They are. Yeah. Is there a way to do group action along the lines of they're, they're, like doing in the UK, where they're like arrest the judge, or... No, no, no. is that here's, not the way? Here's what you do. Okay, um, and this, honestly, I think this is going to be the next revolution that, uh, you know, like the Industrial Revolution where people were throwing their tools into the cogs and the machines and their jackets and their bodies, if need be, to stop the machines, to, to protest what was going on. Well, money only, government only needs money to operate. They make money by you spending money, period. So I think the next lessons we're going to do is going to, attack, I think I'm only going to start attacking some very specific things, and that's going to be number one, CRA. Because I promised them years ago that I would fuck with them until the day I die. <laughs> That's not good. Right vindictive, though. Yeah, yeah. Not, not to be vindictive. So, hey. <laughs> so I don't, I don't mind making good on that promise. So, yeah. <laughs> you gotta stop the money coming into the machine. That's that's a Canada Revenue Agency. 
And they claim that they need this money because, uh, oh, here, here's, a good, here's a good accounting scam for you. I took accounting in economics university. So um, if you really want to steal from people, um, you create a bank account where all the revenue of the country goes. So you only have revenue and then debt. So all the revenue goes into this one fund and all the debt shows up over here. And then nobody ever really questions what those debts are, like for instance the trillions of dollars that are owed to the Bank of Canada, which is ultimately then owed to us, by the way, if that's a new concept for people. Or uh, even somebody taking out a thousand dollars credit on their credit card. They're yeah. creating money out of well, that's right? Yeah, that's the, the same kind of thing, right? But so the government's spending all this money they're getting from the Bank of Canada that basically is ultimately owed to us. That's why our certificate, our particulars of live birth is filed with the Bank of Canada. That's the security. Then the government can go on a spending spree, right? Well, if that, if that debt is owed to us and there's interest on that debt, and that's all they're collecting money for is to pay the interest on that debt, but we don't even know that that debt doesn't exist in the first place. Isn't that a good way to, to create some accounting fraud there? Well, look, we need all these revenues to pay off this debt that doesn't exist in the first place. So if they mash everything together as much as possible, it's really hard for people to track down where all the fraud's going on. But paying off debts that don't exist is one really good way to fuck people over. So um, the best thing to do then is just to cut off the money, cut it off. I mean, what do you do to your kid when he's not mowing the lawn like he's supposed to? Well, you stop his allowance. It's pretty simple. That got done to me many a time when I was a kid. I learned my lesson on that one, okay? Uh, the other thing is, too, is your argument on that is, is the government says, well, you can't just do that, you know, when, you, when you're going to court against CRA, make some other arguments. I mean, I'm a contractor. If I built a house for somebody that wasn't up to expectation, do I get paid for that house? No. So if the government's argument is that we're paying for all these wonderful services the government is providing, then you send them an affidavit that says, you know what, your services are not up to par. I'm not getting out of this agreement what I was supposed to be getting, so fuck you. I'm not paying you. Yeah, when the services are up to par, and I'll let you know when that is, because I have yet to see the contract with what you're supposed to be providing me, but I just know I'm not happy in the first place. Then we'll talk. So there's that argument. There's all sorts of arguments you can make all day long. But the whole thing is you got to cut off Revenue Canada, and then you got to cut off property taxes because without those two things, people would be able to live in their home and not leave if they didn't have to, and just chill out and grow a garden. Uh, that was a concept I came up with like five years ago. I called, I called it going super gone to get on the government. Right? The best way to protest the government is to stay at home and grow a fucking garden. And then when they finally have to come onto your property with guns to remove you, who's the aggressor? Okay, that's all Gandhi did in India. They, everyone sat down and then when people had to basically come and put them in a chokehold to get them back to work, well, who just lost that war? You show who the aggressor is. Show who needs you. Hey, you need me. You just came onto my property to come here and to, to kill me until I go back and perform for you people like a fucking trained monkey, you know? That's when you've got the upper hand, when they come onto your property to harm you. Especially for property taxes and all else. So that's the other one I'm going to be addressing is the property taxes. I know we've covered that in other episodes as well, where a very simple argument shut that whole thing down. So, um, so that, that, that'll be, uh, so that, there's a promise. Those will be the next two episodes to come up, is we'll do some detailed stuff on Canada Revenue Agency and property taxes. Because everything after that is a moot point. Guess what? If they take your driver's license, because you got too many speeding tickets, you didn't show up to court to pay or fight. That's, That's the best fucking thing that ever could happen to you. Yeah. Great. Here's your license back. Now fuck off. I'm gonna drive without it. Woo! <laughs> That's not fear. That's not terror. Okay. That they just did you a favor, actually. Good. Thank you. Thank you for revoking my license to perform a function of government. I guess I won't do that anymore. Maybe if it's assign some homework. Uh, some homework. Yeah, here's some homework. Read. <laughs> um, I just gave I just gave everybody about five different things they could read. I didn't even bring up this one. This is the Canadian Bill of Rights. And again, the only reason I don't like bringing up acts is because they're they are they are acts. They don't technically apply to us, but there is benefits from reading things like the Canadian Bill of Rights because it tells you what government cannot do to you. Those are valuable things to know. So you got the Canadian Bill of Rights, 1960. I think that was Diefenbaker. Great piece of legislation. Um, 
Apparently, the government felt the need to redo it in the Canadian Constitution because even the government realized, oh, this is this blatantly only applies to government. The government knew that this only applies to government, and they were a little bit too blatant about it. So you can thank Diefenbaker for that, even though I promised way back in the day that I was going to find Diefenbaker's grave and thank him for the Avro Arrow Project. No. But he's redeemed himself with the Bill of Rights, so it's okay, I forgive you. Start with that one. Read the, read the Constitution Act and read the whole thing. Don't stop with just the Charter and Rights and Freedoms. Read the whole thing. The Charter and Rights and Freedoms stops at 32. And 32 is the one that tells you, uh, and I read this earlier already, I got it highlighted in here. Right? I keep these all for quick reference for myself. So it tells you who the Charter applies to. And obviously a lot of people can make, you know, people send me arguments all the time. Oh, well that doesn't mean it doesn't apply to you. Well, I think it does. And anybody that understands English does. And if somebody else reads this and that's not what they understand from reading that, then I don't care. Get back to work because you've got a lot of fucking debt to pay off. Okay? Enjoy. Because I don't care and I don't want to hear your argument to the contrary. Um, maxims of law. Wherever you can find them, read them. Bouvier's has great ones. Even Black's Law Dictionary has great maxims of law. The original Latin, I would love to learn to speak Latin. I might not be capable of it by now. My brain's probably so entrenched in, in English. I know. Um, and read them. Bouvier's is great. Uh, Black's Law, whatever, just download the maxims and read them. Print them up, highlight the ones you like, and start putting those into your documents. When I file a commercial claim against the government, I have one whole legal page. My cover page is nothing but legal maxims. These are the laws that govern me and my contracts. One whole page of the ones that I went through and I liked and just went, oh, okay, added to all my documents. So this is not rocket science.